first drifted alarmingly in the bedding was, you know, fancy in the morning it continued to drift. It was laid on the on the exchanges to, to lose. It was something you'd see in a, in a Dick Francis novel, Charles Bones. The ground is soft, it's not, it's oh, not. it's heavy. Soft on time, so it's, it's, it's heavy. Okay. A huge warm welcome to the Bar Stewards. It's Sunday CERN and time, and we won't let you down today because we've got some fantastic topics and reviews on the weekend's racing. And before we get going, joining me uh, also, obviously, is John and Chris, as usual. But I'd like to start the show off with a special mention to a certain Jeff Newhouse. Recently had a Bar Stewards Patreon paid for with a bottle of whiskey. And the reason this shout-out, we don't usually do shout-outs, but... Uh, he never misses this show. Not not miss an episode. And do you know why, John? Because he enjoys the misery. <laughs> mm. That's good. I'm glad somebody does. Yeah. <laughs> we are legion. So Jeff proud. Jeff Newhouse, that's a reason for Patreon. Remember at Christmas, folks, we'll get to Christmas. Don't buy puppies and things like that and expensive gifts. Buy Patreon. And then you can also read stunning articles like John Lang's wrote today, which, by the way is absolutely bloody hilarious, the forward, I, th- I thought. And and it's not just funny content. He's got his notes for the week and the, these track horses in there as well. And what I'm going to do for Sunday Sermon listeners is that aren't Patreon, I just want you to read it anyway, just because you're loyal to the show, et cetera, et cetera. And I want you to read that because obviously John's a massive part of Bar Stewards. And honestly, it's well worth the read. So that'll be unlocked free content click on the link on our twitter yeah. you'll see john's Bit first article right. yeah it's lovely it's a, br- a brilliant piece of work i've had a lot of positive comments today on that so we started off positive. It's the best piece of written work since dale linton's will <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say he's not dead but he is dead isn't he yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Will. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so jeff newhouse we've started off positive i'm sorry it's not miserable enough for you at the moment we'll we'll get there we'll get there through the show Right. Okay, we're going to start off with a review of the weekend's action. And obviously, the sad thing with Doncaster was the ground. It was more aching to Haydock, middle of winter for the Betfair chase than it was it was for flat racing. But John, I'm going to come to you because there were two races I wanted to ask your opinion on yesterday, which the Brocklesby, first of all. Because obviously, I know you make notes from what you see with your eyes, paddock wise. And I wanted to know what you thought of the Brocklesby. Overall, I thought there were plenty of plain bastards in the race, to be honest. Yeah. The ones that looked all right, unsurprisingly, did start to come to the fore in the race. Um, I quite like Craig Lidster's horse that was fourth and Havana Prince that was fifth. The favourite still looked a little bit on the leg to me, but did look a cut above most of what was on offer yesterday. I think I put in my article, actually, there was five or six in there. If a terrier had got hold of them by the neck and shook them, they'd have probably died instantly. So the rat quarter was up somewhat on previous years, maybe. Yeah, they were all right. I don't think it was maybe the Brockles bit of that match the last couple of years, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I kind of got the gist from what you told me yesterday and what you wrote this morning um, in, in, in your article that you, you didn't feel the race was up to much in terms of sort of like inspection. But I think you think the second could be one that ends up at Royal Ascot, maybe, Valadera. It'd probably end up there. I wouldn't have said, I wouldn't have him name out as a winner. I think they're one that won in Ireland's better. The one that won last Saturday. Um but something for AT or something like that, is it? Yeah, uh, Curra winning it. And again, again, I would only have thought that was a Windsor Castle, Norfolk Stakes type rather than... I don't, I don't even see the common yes in the first week of the season anyway. Comparisons, Billy the Kid, John, they're already saying the next Ryan Moore. What, what, what's, <laughs> what's your view of him? Because I've, I've, not, I've not spoken to you privately or, or publicly on this before, Billy Lofnane. I know you like opinions on jockeys and styles and stuff. What's your opinion of him so far? He, he looks all right. I, I wouldn't say, say him do anything bothering on genius level yet, but, you know, he, the kid's just starting out, isn't he? He hasn't got a lot wrong up to now. No, I, I think Planus he's... Kid's good, isn't he? That Connor Planus, he seems pretty good. Absolutely. Co- yeah. Connor Planus and, I, I, and Billy, for me, sit really well, basically. I, no, they're both mate, yeah. Yeah. I suppose, like, Benoit 
he's all, we'll come on to that in a minute in the Lincoln, but Benoit, you'd put as a, as a future sort of champion jockey, you'd probably say if he, if he, if he, if he carries on the way he is, he's, he's improving all the time. In regards to the Lincoln job, Benoit rode for the friend of the show, the Frenchman down in Sussex, Sussex corner, winning the race with migration. I was pleased for him because I watched the interview after the race and I won't say I were welling up of it, but I felt the emotion from Menuzi. I don't know if you saw that on um, when, when he, he was having the mic shoved in his face and it's kind of, kind of, kind of quite a nice moment. It'd be nice to see him win a really big one this year, wouldn't it? I mean, bearing in mind, John, he had Lionel took off by the mad one from Norman. Yeah. And you could have probably have felt frustration because the way I think, by the way, he's, he, he said to us on the show, you were always welcome down there to visit the yard and yeah. stuff if, if we're ever down. So that's we'll, like, that's, we'll turn up mob banding you, tomorrow. Yeah, mate, you'll be wanting info. Still. Yeah, you'll be wanting oh, the best. Mate. <laughs> They'll have to get a restraining order now. I'll be yeah. creeping around there all day, every day. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I've got I've got a mate swimming the Solent for charity in uh, July. Oh, all right. He's, he's swimming across to the other ways. Well, he's trying, so I, I think he'll get killed, to be honest. But, yeah, yeah, drown off. <laughs> um, spread, yeah, he, he's, he's having a bash anyway. And, uh, there's, there's no sharks. Anyways, though. Well, I've, I've chucked a few quid in the pot just to make sure what he does actually attempt it. And I'm I'm going to go down there and ride, ride in a boat quite close. Well, close enough to throw stuff at him anyway while he's swimming. <laughs> and, uh, driver you are, honestly. And uh, we, we might just have a, have a pop in and uh, say Sergeant Wilson while we're down that neck of the woods. Why not? A bacon sandwich with Sergeant Wilson. Nothing would be fine. It looks beautiful down there where they train. Like to, like to see Sir Bob in the flesh. But but having read the sectionals today, John, uh, obviously I didn't have that data to hand yesterday, but having read them today, it appears they've gone rather quick. The fractions early was, was too fast, which basically tells you that despite the draw advantage towards, you know, the, the, towards the stand side, yeah. which, which was prevalent, Awal, the second, has probably he, run a monster run, race. Yeah, he's run out of a race. And he, man, I did think he looked exceptionally well and a right nice horse before the race. I wasn't surprised he ran really well. The the word the word sort of floating round on the day was that they thought he was definitely group class and, and you know, like a, a, a one that they're going to not, not mess around in handicaps after this. So, so it's you, one of... You'd see him getting a Queen Anne entry, wouldn't you? Yeah, he's a good horse. He's a very good horse and one to look forward to this season. Some I've read some people saying that he wandered around a bit when he sort of hit the front, and I sort of get that because when he was running with Bowardar uh, Boward, uh, the third, he was sort of running up sides for a bit. I felt, and then and then as soon as Benoit co- come to his come to his like sort of uh, shoulder, it, you could see him go on again. Like as if yeah, so, yeah. that might be a concern for a, a Wild's connections. Just maybe you know you, you don't want to get there too soon because I'm not sure what he does in front, and then you're vulnerable at that level to something with a real good. I, 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 good I wouldn't be too sure. I, I, I think, as you would say, with the section, as he's gone fast enough, and yeah, yeah, he's it could probably be that. he's probably fucking knackered. Yeah, know? yeah, it could be that also. But that's I know it's obvious and we're saying that's the obvious one to take out the race, but it is a while I think has got a big season in front of, of him. OK, I've been asked by a few uh, listeners and Twitter followers have, have been on at me to have a look at a ride that I tipped in. I, I biked a horse called Lil Guff on Saturday in the 425 at Kempton and the ride was surrounding uh, Haley Turner on cruise. And, and there was a lot of controversy over this. Basically, you know, People said, "Take Lee, take a look at the ride." I have. I think it was abysmal, really. I, I, I to be honest, I didn't notice at the time because I was so embroiled in watching your fancy, like you do. You know, I've had a right few quid on Lil Guff, who was like battling away in the final furlong, so I didn't really notice the melee in behind until after the sh- after watching it back. And I watched it back and thought, "Crikey." She, I, she did tend to find a lot of trouble. I I don't think the ride was was hooky or anything. I just think it was shit. it was just yeah shit. Um, but bearing in mind, John Haley's riding a lot of like Simcox non triers uh, uh, in back end maidens last year. You know Haley was on quite a few like proper stop jobs. So I I think if you if you're doing that and you're being employed to get the handicap marks, I think sometimes. 
you probably lose you a bit of sharpness. As in, she she just didn't seem very proactive at all. You know, she just thought, well, you know, I'll go. <clears throat> and and you, you, you're getting blocked in a five runner race. It's not acceptable. It, it was a poor ride. But yeah, if you back Cruz, I think. You, you, you see, I, I can't understand why. This sounds awful, really, but I can't understand why anybody employs her after her retirement. Because when she retired, she said one of the reasons that she retired was because she felt the bottle had gone. That's interesting, yeah. Why would you put somebody up who's already said that and, and jacked in once? There's people coming through, like young working men and so on and so forth. It, it baffles me. Really does. Well, Simcock's obviously using it quite often. I mean, Simcock, the art of the of the hold up magic, one of the best trainers in the land, as we've already discussed on previous shows. Well, as because... I say, he makes training winners with one hand tied behind his back, doesn't he? He holds them up and sticks early turnaround. Well, it's like it's basically it's like playing tug, you know, tug of war with like giant air stacks and big daddy on the other side, you know, but yet you, you still manage to get the job done. You know, as we know, if, if you give me and Joe Fanning a month down there, we'd have him on thirty percent. No, he, 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 well, this is it. So the man can train this dropping him out, and I mean, it didn't just it didn't just like taking a pull, is it, and sitting second or third? He no. drops them all out. Hmm. You know, the, Jeremy Gas couldn't understand why he were two percent when he come over here after being successful in Australia yeah. Yeah. because he drops everything out, and the jungle juice kicked in in us. Big big turn of foot out straight. But yeah. the problem we're doing it here is that it don't work. Our tracks just aren't conducive, most of them, to no. coming from miles off the pace. We have to wait for Donny, Yarmouth, Ascot, with big long straights to to, to back, you know, to back the old up runners. It's, it, but they don't understand this. They're just so yeah. one dimensional. And anyway, listen to the bastard Simcock. Come on the show. Get him to anyone knows Simcock. Get him to come on. We'll have we'll have a chew the fat about held up. Right. So yeah. So that was Haley's ride. Obviously disappointing to most folk. I agree, chaps. If you back that horse, you probably are very unlucky. I would say uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Move on to Chelmsford that evening, John, for a good race. It was the seven o'clock race won by Bold Act and. I genuinely think this horse is is going to be very, very good over a mile and a quarter and beyond. Do you agree? It was a good effort last night. Very good. You don't get many dropped out there winning. I know there was a decent pace. Uh, Julie chapel Lions did too much in front. And, 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 you know, they went a nice clip. But, I, but I, I, I never particularly fancy them getting up that inside rail either. No, reason. no, at Chelmsford, they all swing off and it seems to be middle of the track, etc. And I thought that was a good performance because I don't think you've seen the best of Baldak there anywhere near. I like the horse last year. I felt the horse was going to be a great sort of 10 furlong horse this year. And I just, honestly, I I, I can see Appleby now. Uh, I see it's entered on um, Friday in a listed race, but I can't see him taking that option up uh, so soon. But it won't surprise me that they go a mile and a quarter with this horse. Maybe even a, a Derby trial, John, somewhere, perhaps. Could you see that? Under the biggest shock in the world. Maybe it's, um, the timing might be right to go at that blue ribbon thing at Epsom. Yeah, just just have a look. Let's have a look at this lad. You know, what's he what's he going to be like over further? Because he definitely needs more than a mile. That's that's I'm adamant with that. Um, he, he, you know, he was he was a miler last year. So and a, and a strong at the finish miler last year. Um, his new approach out of a Dubawi mare. Some people might say, well, he might that might be that might be his optimum trip. But I, I think he wants ten. He might not get twelve, but I, th- I definitely think he improves for ten. So it was an impressive performance. That. From Bold Act. Okay, on to today's trials, John, at Leopard's Sound and uh, today's action. Did you see anything you like today? I like your opinion of these because you, you tend to look at them before they, they go in and stuff. Um, so I'd like to, you to pick your best out that you liked at, at, at Leopard's Sound today. Tricky, really, because the, the, the one that I did think was overpriced before the race was in that um, 1,000 guineas trial. Yeah. Um, she ended up finishing fifth from a fairly unpromising position, to be honest. Um, just trying to remember the name of it. Nightcliff. That's the one, yeah. Um, 
I know she's got an entry in the Gladness Stakes. That might be a, a decent target for her, actually, going forward. Um, she definitely could have placed that there um, if she hadn't missed the kick. I thought she looked in tremendous order before the race. Yeah, and, and you said this before the race as well to me. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and I, I was a little bit disappointed with where she was sat early on, you know, I thought, oh, for God's sake. Because she struck me as one that would stay the seven really well and probably one to mile. And then to, to sit out the back when they didn't appear to be going particularly quick was a bit, uh, was a bit disappointed with that. And I had back to H where it's 80 on the machine. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, she sort of missed the kick and, and you know, it, it didn't help. But she's by uh, territories and I, I think that's key to soft ground territories as a sire definitely means soft ground so so she, I, if i were connections now and obviously i don't know the trainer i'm not very yeah. uh, fair with with some like smaller irish trainers but but basically if if i if i was them i would crack on and and yeah. run, run this spring and try and make hay while the goings yeah. proper proper slop in the uh, in the 2000 trial, I uh, physically I like Paul Discovery. I thought that one's done very well over the winter, and again didn't come from the most promising position in the race. I thought that run, what might prove an interesting trial for something like the Jersey Stakes. I could I could see him benefiting a really strongly run seven held up. Yeah. There's plenty of USA in the pedigree as well, so I don't think some of the ground will bother him either. No. I don't think Hans Anderson's improved much, to be honest. And I, I, have, a, I have a feeling that Karachi might not have trained on um, because he was struggling to get I, I and empty metaphor off the bit turning in. And he shouldn't have been, really. Um, he, he was the first one under the pump. I wasn't convinced by that carriage anyway, but I'd, I'd be very wary of him anyway. Yeah, in the uh, in the Bally Sacks, John, mm. what did what did you make of the O'Brien pair, uh, Alexand- Alexandropolis and Denmark? I didn't find myself uh, busting to back either a anti post or anything important. That's for sure. Were, were you a bit put off by uh, Ryan Moore's Alexandropolis, like hanging and like messing about? Might not like the ground very much, but. Neither of them particularly grabbed me, and uh, I, I, I mean I wasn't overly enamoured with any of the field, to be honest. No, no I, I sort of agree. Obviously, White Birch winning that uh, the, the outsider of the field. What one one that you pointed out to me because I had a word for it was uh, Paddy Toomey's Persian Jewel in the yeah. opener, opener at Leopardstown, and I found your comments interesting, uh, John. Do you want to elaborate and tell the listeners what you told me? It's not to get a fairly late action to post, and I, I don't think the ground would have suited it that day. I think she'd be well worth another chance on a quicker surface. Yeah, they really like her a lot. That was the the word, you know, they, they thought she's a very smart yeah. filly on, on homework. But like you say, she won't have worked on anything like that. Um, in, in, in the slow paces, as, as I say, she moved beautifully to post, but it's a really late action. You couldn't really say a big in a way I throw that to the was I was pretty pleased she managed to run third, to be honest. Yeah, good stuff. The Persian Jewel wants to follow on better ground, says John. Pick up a maiden and then and then go from there, I would think, knowing knowing connections. Uh, but it does all lofty entries, so who knows what Paddy Toomey will do with Persian Jewel. Okay, so that covers um, su- Sunday's, Sunday's trials. Uh, we've not really much to say today, certainly nothing for the classics from me and John or anything like that or any any big guides. I, I respect John's opinion on what he said today regarding North Cliff, etc. So that, that's one to watch out for if they take the gladness entry. But moving forwards, um, we come on to the next part of the show now where we stop talking uh, horse shit. And we just on, talk shit. And we just talk yeah, shit. Exactly. Yeah, that's not totally shit. It's shit that's not totally shit. So I'm going to start us off with a couple of a couple of sort of scoops, if you like, that the racing media don't have at the moment, and I'll give it you. The first one is we've had a few questions on ammo racing and <laughs> Dominic French Davis. You know, is he involved? Well, his name's on the license, of course, as that's that's, that's the name of the trainer, but he's not actually training them. The trainer that is training them is Rafael Frere. He's a Brazilian uh, trained in Norway last season. 
He's very sort of up on technology, a bit like Kubler, you know, with the with the stride length and and the, and the fitness, the equine monitoring data. So you can see Kia Jurabchen of Amos probably gone with the old. Yes, this guy's talks a good game. It's probably cheap. Um, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think you're sending him a Kubler. Well, no. Well, that's it. Friend of the show, Dan Kubler, who's, exactly. who's who, who, who is who has displayed a, a a myriad of expertise on our on our podcast and and told told us how he does it. I would I say. Think, that, I, think, I think it's fair to say that ammo racing don't listen to this pod, then, isn't it? Pretty much. Uh, so, so it's Raf, Rafael Freire is the is the Brazilian that he's uh, doing all the work. Uh, apparently, they, they couldn't get the license in time, so they. Uh, or, or whatever they have to do these days. It sounds, like, sounds like that Brazilian bloke that was friendly with Peter Mandelson. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. probably have. I mean, these days, I mean, to get a trainer's license, you probably have to do a lap dance, take them for a meal in Portman Square. I don't know, John. What 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 do you have to do to get a license these days? But anyway, so, so obviously he couldn't get his license in time, so that's why Dominic French Davis is on the uh, on on the on the uh, yes the the, the the trainer's name. So so that's put to bed, and that's an exclusive. You heard it here first, not Nick Luck. There you go. Second bombshell is uh, one of your uh, followers from last year, John, mm-hmm. I believe, right? It was a Roger Varian train runner called, do you remember it, Aiden? Aiden, yeah. Was third in the Guineas to Caribus. Yes, it's no longer a Roger Varian train runner, though, is it? No, it's Andrew Baldwin's. Yeah. But the bombshell right here is... Um, yeah. So obviously it's been took away from variants who yeah. apparently had the horse examined and stuff. Apparently it was galloping with its head up in the air. They thought it was wind. They th- surely it's got to be wind. They, mm-hmm. they just couldn't identify it. It's gone to Andrew Balding. Yeah. Balding's given it the full MOT. And basically it's had several fractures in its neck. Good God. And variant didn't pick it up. That's not a good look, is it? It's not the best, is it? You'd hope that uh, a yard like that would pick up on something as major as that. How long is he going to be out for? Do we know? Don't don't know the the rest on that. Because obviously, you know, he's coming you, back as a five year old. If he's had a busted neck. Yeah, well, well, this is it. So several fractures to the neck. Uh, that's why you haven't seen him since the Guineas. But the variant team couldn't work out uh, what it was. And, um, how did he break his neck in the fucking Guineas? I don't know. <laughs> I just genuinely don't know, but yeah, so a couple of must, bastards must have fallen and we didn't see. Yeah, remounted. A couple of bastards exclusives there. Right on to a, a paper that you love, John, and you, you read every day. Mail on Mail on Sunday. Me and me and Paul <laughs> yeah, The hype mile. Yeah. Was, uh, we we like separated at birth, aren't we? Yeah, so the, the Mail on Sunday, uh, revelation today that they've they've stopped Animal Rebellion of uh, stopping the Grand National, a massive plot this to stop the Grand National, where supposedly 300 activists mm-hmm. were going yeah. to get ladders and go to the quiet part of the course to get over the fences and basically glue glue themselves together <laughs> and, and sit across the course, John. What are we making of this? Well, some of them gothy type birds are all right, and you? you wouldn't mind being glo- <laughs> you wouldn't mind being glo- to some of them, would you? Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck me. Bit of posh goth. Yeah, a bit of posh, goth. Yeah, bit of posh goth, you know. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't mean the absolute skaters from the inner city. <laughs> the <know>. skaters. <laughs> you are from the north, so I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you know. I read I read the the whole article, and and it was quite astonishing. The type of people involved. There was um, a, a, a former journalist, stroke businessman, wealthy businessman. Yeah. Uh, he was sort of leading it. Apparently, they were all going to rent houses uh, in Liverpool. There's no council house kids there, are they? They're all nice. Oh no. People with a few quid who've got fuck all else to do with them. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of vegans, you know, like like yeah. like fun, heavily funded. As in, they were going to they were going to rent houses for three hundred. Imagine, so you got three hundred. Yeah. And. So you've got to rent houses for 300. Now that's proper funded, isn't it? You know, yeah, that's, that's about that's not quid in Liverpool, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Surely. 
<laughs> to melt 300 quid in total. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, fucking round eight tree. You send them out the fucking, you send them out the Adelphi. Yeah. You yeah. 300 here for two quid, yeah. Yeah, we should send McIver's feeds round and his mates from round there to to, 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 to to sort them out. But 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 yeah, it's a uh, well done. Uh, you know, whatever your views on on Daily Mail, etc. It's a, it was an insider job. They posed as a as a as an activist and basically uncovered the lot. And I think that's that's fair play because had they not done that, would have been looking at a, another embarrassment for the sport. Uh, come the day, and who's to say it still won't happen, or, or there might be some some attempts, uh, which you know from these Save nutters. Money, though, if it's called off, we'd all be better off, wouldn't we? We would do a bollocks. Well, 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 is that? Yeah, um, no, yeah. no, I've got the winner this year, actually. John, what is it? Like, come well, on, this wait. is it. Sermon on the sermon. I've I've been quietly chipping away at uh, Willie Mullins Capadano. Like reasons, I, I, I want all your reasons. Yeah. Well, the reasons go right back to when Bob Ellinger made his chasing debut, actually, and I, I, I noted Capadano as all about stamina. And of late, Woody Mullins has conspicuously avoided races that are all about stamina with him, which I think has preserved his mark. At the start of last season, he was talking about those in terms of a Gold Cup prospect long term. And I, I genuinely think that this has been plotted up for the national. The last run behind is it Jeski or something like that? Uh, was it Janadil? Janadil, sorry, yeah. Again, too short a trip. Just a lovely little skull round. Didn't even give him an entry for Cheltenham. And uh, I, I think it's all, all eyes on Liverpool for this one. And uh, I've, I've been salting quids on him from 40 down to 25. Gotta love the profile of this, John. I, 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 I do. I, I'm just looking now. Obviously, fourth to Long Press in the. Uh, was was that the race where they basically gave Long Press the red carpet in the Brown Advisory last year? And this Pretty one, much. and Cappadano just like was held up out the back, yeah. and yeah, I mean that's top class form. By by, uh, I mean Icy's been on the show recently and gone on about Gallard de Mesnil. Which was seven lengths in front of this, which got a similar sort of, you know, yeah. like sort sort of ride. But you make a very good case here for an horse at twenty fives. There's not a lot not to like about that. Uh, like you say, he's definitely been laid out for the race. You can tell. You can. You can. Yeah, hundred percent. This this will be absolutely pinging for the day. Obviously, you need a lot of luck in the national. But yeah, twenty fives from John. I like that. Again, we're giving you proper content, aren't we, on this Sunday sermon? You've had exclusives that you don't want to read in the racing purse, and now you get a 25s national perk that won't be 25s on the day. Uh, I can guarantee you that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it'll be it'll be si- 64 on the machine. Yeah, 64 <laughs> bet for SP. Yeah. <laughs> I don't th- I don't think that's 25s on the day. No. I don't. I think John makes a, a, a all, all joking aside. I think John makes a, a really good, really good case there. John's having a storm so far, which he has all day. Read his article free on Barstool's Patreon. I've got that in again. Okay, we'll move on. So we come on now to affordability again. The ugly old head of the white paper. Rather than just moan and groan about it all, we can moan and groan about it all. But <laughs> but no, but but but. Now, the topic I'm coming on to is it, there's a chap I, I talk to, you know, well, there's a few I talk to that suffer from gambling harm. And because I like the other side of the story and I, I like to see people's perspective. I don't just like my own view on how the game should be run and how it should work. And I, and I had a really, really good chat uh, today. And it's not really difficult to solve all this, but for some reason we're making, well, we know what the reasons are. We're making it very difficult to solve this problem. Now we all know what gambling harm means, right? Gambling harm is something like you've, you've, you've done the lot. You've got a bank loan. You've done that. You don't tell the missus, the missus leaves you, takes the kids with them. Right. That's gambling harm. Not all bad then, is it? It's not all bad. No. That's my definition of gambling harm. Gambling harm is not what the grifters are all getting on with here, where said young man that's on, I don't know, he's just got, he's a joiner, apprenticeship with a firm, whatever. He's on 25 a year. 
right? He does. He takes a five grand loan, does five grand, and then says says to his girlfriend or his family, "Look, I've, I've been an idiot. I've lost too much money." Pay the five grand back. Don't do it again. There's a lot more to gambling harm than what's admitted on the bookmaking side of the industry. And this is the problem. We've got two sets of opinions. We've got one side that wants to basically ban gambling uh, or make it ridiculous, like £100 a month limits, like Ian Duncan knobhead. And then on the other side, we've got people that just say, no, just you fucking, it's your money. Just fucking blow what you want. Right. There has to be some, I believe there has to be some kind of middle ground somewhere. But the problem is achieving the middle ground is very difficult because the Gambling Commission clearly don't know what they're doing, right? They're absolutely clueless. That The staff don't even know the rules. I know people that spoke to the management there. They have absolutely no idea on, on their own rules. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. They're, they're absolutely clueless. So what can we do here? I mean, Surely the middle ground is the option here. We need to look at it. Surely it's easy enough to say, hang on a minute, Doris from Walsall is in a cleaning job. They've checked this on affordability. That she, They've seen a salary go in, which is 1,200 quid a month or 1,300 quid a month. She can't afford to lose more than eight or 900 quid, right? That, that's fair enough. And, and that, that's good. But, but what I'm trying to say is that on the other side of the coin, You've got people that suffer genuine, genuine, genuine harm that absolutely do their absolutes in and and lose fam lose the family, you know. And and yeah. people say, oh well, well fuck them, you know. It's personal responsibility, <laughs> you know. And it, to a, to a point, I agree. But also from an empathy point of view, I don't think as a society we can carry on letting people sort of do ridiculous amount, you know, to the point where they're considering suicide and everything else. And I know, I know people listen to something as Lee, as Lee just being paid off by the other side. No. Because, chill. He's yeah, chill. Yeah. Because the other, the other <clears throat> side, do, to a degree, does need to be heard, right? And we do need to, like, tackle it properly. Not how we're doing currently. The SCV, it's shit. It doesn't work. I could do... Uh, right, so I'll, I'll give, you, give you an example. I was talking to, the, to a chap today, right? He could lose five thousand pounds now with the, with the firm, right? Self exclude, right? But he could still do five thousand pound five minutes later with another firm. It's not quick enough. It doesn't. It's not an instant. You know. You know. It takes time. It's bollocks. There's nothing. And then there's nothing to stop said person now playing in crypto offshore with a VPN, playing better slots, better better games that you can't get access to in this country. Because they won't let you have multi spins, they won't let you do this, that, and so other, because there's restrictions already in. Now, that's my point, right? You can't then stop like people like me, you, John, from having being able to bet what we want to bet because the rules itself aren't sufficient. And the problem with this is the fines that the fining big bookmakers like like eight 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 nineteen point four million. That's gone straight to the Treasury, by the way. I can tell you that officially. That's gone to the Treasury. That's that's not gone anywhere. That's not gone to help gambling. That's gone to Rees Mogg and his, his mates. Um, so so it's it's bollocks. But what we need is proper, you know, like people that know what they're doing on this, right? I, I could tell a mile off. I don't need I don't need to be trained in say compliance on affordability. I could tell when someone is way over the head, way over the head. And I'd, I'd nip it in the bud. But the way the current system works, Chris, John, is that even if you nip it in the bud and say to that chap, you or, or, or lady, right, you are not allowed to bet anymore with this firm because you have clearly, you you you, you know, it's too much. Yeah. Sorry. Right. They'll move on to the next one. And the next one, SCV sorts nothing. It basically, like, in fact, you can each actually change the current system. You could change your name by deed poll, right? And the, and then it wouldn't pick it up. So if a gambler if, if a gambler wants to, you know, change yeah. your name by default, and and then then you go again. Here we go, fresh name, fresh start. And and the, these are the things. I've always fancied being called Clint. Yeah. I must go <laughs> I'd change my name to Randy Weaver if I had a chance. That'd be me, Randy Weaver. Yeah, anyway. and, and <laughs> whatever. Get your thoughts on this. You know what what's. I mean, what I've just said, I mean, 
I want to sh- I-, I want to do the middle ground bit. We we came up on Barstures with this uh, with with the help of uh, someone that wants to remain anonymous. Yeah. The SCW the the wallet idea where yeah. once you you deposit via a third party provider. Once that thousand pounds gone, that's it for the month or whatever, until you prove that you can, you know, the emphasis isn't on you. They don't check your credit account or whatever. If you want more on, then you have to give data and, and st- or state your case to experience people as to why you should be able to gamble more than that. Now, some people say, well, that's wrong, but you have to, I do think you have to have certain empathy. Do we agree with that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I suppose. I mean, you're right, but but you know, the, the approach you advocate in terms of uh, adopting a more sophisticated approach. You you and I both know that that that's very expensive. It's time consuming and requires a huge amount of skill. It needs people like you, Lee, that that can you know that can identify people intuitively who are over their head. So it's far easier and cheaper for government to say, oh, well, fucking let, let's just restrict everybody. And obviously you've got the other side of it. Say, well, let, let people screw their lives up. I agree that the middle ground is preferable, but I just don't see that there's the money or the resources to actually build a system that actually does identify problem gamblers at an early stage. So, I, yeah, but, you know, I wouldn't be optimistic you arrive at that solution. And by the way, another shameless plug. There's a there's a there's a Patreon article coming from Chris uh, tomorrow on addiction. So so and and and, and so, so that, that that's worth a read. Um, definitely worth a read. So that, that's something to look forward to for Patreon subscribers. Right, regarding affordability, I, chaps, I would say it's helped me in a way. And right. this is weird. I've changed my approach significantly on Betfair. Well, look, if you if we deposit money, what yeah. happens? You know the, the the affordability please go woo woo woo. You know you you've put and I, by the way I know a professional punter this yeah. week has lost his not this week two weeks ago actually has lost his account. Uh, it's eight hundred thousand up lifetime Betfair exchange and but he lost forty grand over Cheltenham and they, that's it they shut him. Yeah. So what was the reason what just because he did 40 grand in or yeah because it was higher than normal but it was Cheltenham Fez so obviously yeah. he's obviously had a good 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 old go yeah. you know had a bad one and um that's it good night <laughs> yeah so the, 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 the industry's facing massive problems and I don't like things like the BHA who, who make statements supporting uh sort of gambling harm right yeah. Whilst you've got to have some support, you've also got you. You really do have to come across to the point that you have to support betting. Stop yes. pandering to these. You can't do it if you if you sell like Jeff Banks. Jeff Banks is self interest, right? Jeff Banks cares about Jeff Banks sure. and his and his, and his bookmaking model. He don't give a, he don't give a fuck about me, you, anybody else. No. As long as Jeff Banks online, he's making money and doing well. Jeff That's Banks that. cares. That's it. It's yeah. finished, yeah? yeah. So the BHA run horse racing, so they so they know what funds horse racing. So they really shouldn't care less about ulterior forces trying to take them down. They should care more about betting and promote betting. Yeah. And and I'm sick of that's twice in two weeks the BHA have made reference to online to um, you know whilst you know sympathising with people suffering from gambling harm. No. You promote betting, you morons. The the reason that the BHA kind of try to, you know, please every interest group is that because they've got no real confidence in the product. Right? If you had confidence in the product and an understanding the product that you are selling is good quality and is sufficiently well run to withstand all these sort of um, external challenges. You wouldn't need to bend to people who are anti-whip or anti-gambling. You'd stand your corner. You'd argue, you know, th- th- your reasons, and 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 you'd do so in the knowledge that that you've got a good product behind you. But these guys don't understand it, and they don't really have any confidence in it, and that's the problem. Mm. Uh, John, would you agree with that? Entirely, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those that I, I just think if the sport was properly run. We wouldn't be here. Um, I also, I also think this affordability thing, right? It's a cartel, mm. right? Right. Th- th- think, think, think. Banks, uh, not Jeff Banks, but the the big banks. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. So what 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 happens with the ombudsman with the big fines when the when the when the big banks mm. are, no, are naughty? We anti money laundering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What happens? Yeah. Massive fines. I'm sure that's on purpose. Do you know why? Because that stops the small man thinking, right, we're going to set a bank up and we're going to because the red tape and regulation will finish them if they yeah. ever breach the rules or found breaching the rules. And it's the same in bookmaking. So what's happening now is you've got Flutter, Entain and, mm -hmm. and Port Vale with 90% of, of, of betting turnover in the UK. Yeah. Right? So imagine like, say, I don't know, we might even be billionaires. It'd be great, wouldn't it? But right, imagine trying to set up and it's like all of a sudden gambling commission come up and want to find you 20 million because you've let mm. some some poor fucker rinse themselves on, on, on the slots. That puts people off from joining. So that's your cartel. It creates the cartel of the big three. They, they, they've, they've got rid of the sharps. They've, they, they've got rid of the, 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 the people that make money on the, on the accounts, yeah. on the betting accounts. And all they want now going forwards is the £10 lads, 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 blogger followers that will just like, just do their absolute bollocks over a season, but not too much. I think they do, they do a, they do a tenner acker on a Saturday or a tenner or a yeah. pound lucky 15 and too do it. System. We can sell American, can you? It is. Yeah. It is. It works. And the and they're gonna that's that that that's that's the future project of of the big corp. And that's where it shafted all the genuine people that, that follow racing like us have absolutely no hope because, and that's why we're using a according <laughs> to John's article, uh, <laughs> Tapas Addict One. <laughs> the WhatsApp bookie from Spain. <laughs> you need to read it. I, I'm sorry for spoiling it, but it's that good. That's how we. That's how it all ends up. That's how the game all ends up. We go back. We go backwards. All this restriction. We end up back in where we were in the 80s, betting in pubs with bookmakers, bet with a book because it's this is it. It's, it's what we don't want. But anyway, that's that's how affordable he's going. But no one listens to me because they all want to. If you see photos of the gambling commission employees, they like something yeah. out of a stop oil process and and that yeah. that's that's all you need to know like fucking area 51 breakout didn't it i tell you courses now jeff newhouse will like all this misery now he, he's getting to the misery as we get on with it first prize money disgraceful on tuesday i'm a good supporter of go racing in yorkshire and we'll have charlotte on the show soon i'm sure for go racing in yorkshire but first prize money on tuesday chaps i've seen syndicates and owners say that they're withdrawing the horses after seeing the levels of prize money on offer at Thirst on Tuesday, it's disgraceful. A disgraceful offering. John, it's like Mick Easterby's offering this on a, on a Mick Easterby Buffy day. Cool. Isn't that mad? <laughs> well, you, well, you get a bit of ham donated by an American yeah. guy, John. <laughs> Mick, Mick would probably be serving up whatever the snaffles from the paddock restaurant last year. He'd have had that in Fraser, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah with, some, with some buns from York. <laughs> from the from the hospitality days, frozen yeah. when they get back. Oh, French fancies in freezer. Uh, um, not the pink ones, though. Cause no, no, that pink one. Yeah, a bit brown ones. Yeah. Shit. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More casual racism there. Brown French fancies. You can't say that. Right. So, so that's yeah, the first. Yeah, shit. Though, the brown ones. <laughs> they actually are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. Uh, I don't even know why they make them in brown. No, they are. I agree. They're the rubbish ones. It's like when you do quality streets and stuff and. You know, yeah. the, the the coffee ones are terrible, yeah. aren't they? The, they brought some white ones out on Christmas. They were delicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I must have fucking missed that. Oh, yeah, racial undertones here. I, I, I get where this is going. Right, so going on on race courses, apparently since uh, we've got the lowest attendance figures ever since 95, John, uh, in 2023, uh, why it's, is it's that? Not, it's not surprising. It? Well, everybody's skin can't yeah. go. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's a big mystery. I mean, everybody's feeling the pinch, aren't they? And essentially, racing survives on spare money. Be it owners using spare money to buy horses, be it race goers using spare money to have a day at the races. You know, and there's, the squeeze is on. People have less spare money. What do you think to Doncaster race course on, on Saturday charging 33 quid for a normal entry? It's obscene, isn't it? Really? Thirty-three quid. I'm sorry. Imagine casual race goer. Thinks... Grandstand and paddock, then. Yeah. Fifteen quid tops. 
33 notes to get it at Doncaster <laughs> on. Yeah, that was from Adam Norman, who moans because he can't take his own sandwiches in either, <laughs> or even his own water bottle. They even confiscated his water. Yeah. So I didn't, Adam, think, Adam, I didn't think he had anything. I know, he's like, he's like a stick man. But, the, but the, that is terrible. You shouldn't be allowed water. So, like, he goes in, no, you can't take water in. You cannot take... Uh, don't cast, they're like the Gestapo, Doncaster yeah. Race. Well, I think all, you, you <laughs> can if you said, I have to have water with me because I have tablets to take, then back yeah. off. That's yeah. what you say, don't you? That's what you say. They're worse than the Panama hat police at Goodwood, aren't they? They say, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> huh? I mean that was a disgrace last that summer. Was. I wanted was. to buy a Panama hat job, and you'll <laughs> you'll love this week being Goodwood because you know you think fucking cunt. So I, I I went Cheapside, even though it's hospitality in Cheapside. Yeah. We're in yeah. hospitality, but the, the Panama hat stand is is in the other side. I had two security frog march me <laughs> to the Panama hat stand and wait there and watch me buy yeah. it and frog march me back out. I kid you not. It's true. What, what, what you should have done, you should have put the Panama hat on there and then, and that would have kind of shows them you could have made your escape. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, honestly, I've never said I thought you were one of the locals. That's a massive one. And I, I sent a, a long email to Goodwood about that, yeah. and um, I got no reply. There we go. March so that's, is that Jockey Club Racecourses, John? Uh, no, it's Lord March. Isn't is, it? It Lord, March. is it Lord March? Yeah. He, he wouldn't write to the likes of you. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's weird at Goodwood. You can smell the money. It's yeah. like I remember taking a friend down years ago. We we stood in the paddock and David the Duke Nicholson was stood there, and he was in he was in these loafers. You know, he was he was getting on obviously, and, and yeah. these like like sort of pink socks, Panama hat. He just sort of stood outside of me. He's, you know, he's not got a lot of money, this kid, and he just went. Uh, the quote was immense. He says, "God, you can smell the money." <laughs> It just reeks, you know, like everyone stood around you, you know. It's, anyway, reeks that, privilege, just... privilege, the privileged Bang. southerners, Chris. Yeah, come the revolution, they'll be lined up and shot. <laughs> Every it will, it'll be like it'll be like the aristocrats, John, of the French re- revolution. <laughs> yeah, we can do it, we, we can take it off of you. When they line them up, we... We'll go down there like the peaky blinders, John. Whole pot's death squad. Anyway, hmm. anyway, moving on. I saw an interesting post, John, today from uh, Calvin TC. He, oh, yeah. bas- he basically went to work on Ben Keith. He said he said it was absolutely fucking unbelievable post that Keith was advocating about work experience for youngsters in hmm. betting, betting yeah. environments, and Calvin oh. went berserk and said that's not talk about not reading the room kind of thing current going on with the, the affordability and youngsters yeah. and protecting youngsters so i get that but does ben keith have a point though also in that in our day you know that was the done thing you know you you did have work experience in bookmakers you did well, it was a lot more specialized back then though wasn't it yeah working in the bookmakers required the ability to work out bet work out odds and understand odds and things now it's just everything through that stupid fucking machine isn't it and you know it's, it's just like working on a till somewhere for me two different eras where like you said john you've got one thing where you actually get taught stuff and another thing where it's like just computerized isn't it it's yeah. just literally all you sat in front of a computer computer decided whether to accept that's, that. I mean, that's, that's not really work experience is it you know i mean i can, I can understand it if you're saying you're going to give somebody a spot in a trading room or something like that, you know? They would yeah. sit with the traders and un- understand the, the ins and outs of the business. But if you're just going to sit them in a betting shop taking Yankees and round robins and whatever, you, well, what's the fucking house, really? It is. I mean, Chris, I mean, come, come to you on this one. So, like, yeah. where, where would you sit on this? I mean, should sort of like under 18s be allowed work experience in gambling establishments i mean come on people work in pubs glass collecting pubs 15 16 year olds glad do that i would say they should personally but i agree with tc i think it's a bad look and and that's not saying you know that's a good thing i just think in the current climate <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't look right to me and as john said he's not re- you know what are they actually learning are they learning s- sort of skills that they can use to develop a career in the industry or are they just learning how to push buttons because if the latter then you know it, it is simply you know retail work isn't it 
So I, it would depend on the type of experience, but I think ooh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a difficult one in the current climate. Ten years ago, yeah, maybe, but now I'm not sure that to have a great deal of support personally. I I can't. I... I see both sides actually on this and people say, oh, how can you see Ben Keith's side, you know, but in a way I, I kind of get it that, that we've, we have bastardized, we've, we've let people in to bastardize the word betting, haven't we? Yes. Oh, know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't agree with it, but I just think, you know, it's, a, it's going to be a difficult sell, isn't it? Because too much water has gone under the bridge. Now we've allowed yeah. the, the barbarians to enter. To the citadel, haven't we? You, you know, see, and this is this like, is one for the, this is one for the pro EU zealots out there. You know, <laughs> like like you know the, the evil bullfighting. You know, how's that yeah. going for you? You know, yeah. Spain Spain won't let you ban that. So, uh -oh. so you know, where, where's Germany and France all going bananas over Spain and bullfighting? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. this is the thing. You, you, again, for outrage, it's like yes, but I, I think bullfighting's abhorrent. I, I agree. Fighting. Yeah, I think it's revolting. But, but, know, but it's, it's cultural. Yeah, I, I don't think it's as bad as that thing they deal with the donkeys on the no, platform. It's fucking disgusting as well. But, you know, well, that's got sort of religious. <laughs> fucking hundred foot drop into a yeah. bucket of water. Yeah. 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 Oh, we leave that alone because that's got a religious dimension to it. So we can't touch that Roman Catholic. <laughs> let's, leave, let's leave that alone. Let's worry about horse racing instead. Yeah. Well, well, horse racing and gambling is quite an easy target because obviously. Yeah. The, the Richmond Surrey types, the cardigan wearing, you know, the, they've been left a five million pound house. Uh, yeah. Tar, Tarquin's nothing to do with this time because he hasn't got a fucking clue how to build a business. So <laughs> he, des he decides, well, I need to do something with my time, something good, because I feel guilty inheriting five million. So I need to really kind of just, you know, like set the world straight on rights yeah. and wrongs. That's what we're dealing with. Let's worry right. about climate. You know, you know let, let's tell the rest of the world how to you know, minimise their their carbon footprint. Yeah. Well, and I'll tweak it on my fucking 1,500 quid iPhone, which some poor kid in Africa has lost his life mining the fucking cobalt for the battery. So, yeah, yeah. let's not worry about that. You good know. good, good luck to the USA as everyone's ditching the dollar, but that's for another Bar Stewards political yes. show. So coming up uh, on Bar Stewards, we've, this year, uh, we've, we've got a, a, a gambling pod uh, this week uh, full of gammon. It's myself, Jeff Banks, Steve Donahue, and Dan War appearing on a pod next week free to air as, as all our free to air pods are and that'll be a great listen regarding the gambling review please tune in for that and i promise i will be coming from the other side because we can't have too much gammon on one show we, we need some we need some we need some we need some balance on the show and i'm the best balance you've got so <laughs> tough shit balance <laughs> Balance. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so and so that's something to look forward to for you for you gambling affordability freaks coming this week. To finish the show off, a question from Patrick's Corner, who says, My question is what commercial software do the bastards like to use? Or the, you know, those who bet professionally in a brief pros and cons, and also the same note, do the bastards use time form sectionals or alternative? Okay, Patrick. Um speaking personally, I use ProForm. <laughs> I import sectionals from Timeform into Proform. I have a pretty good view of, of what horses can do what. So that, that's my way forwards. What I will say about software is where a lot of punters probably fall down is they think when they get the software, that's yeah. it, they're, they're going to win money. Uh, Chris sent me an interesting article, actually, didn't you, Chris, earlier this I did. week? Because you sent, you sent it, was a, it was a company called Equinedge uh, in, in America run by Scott McKeever who frequents Gulfstream Park and, you know, this is a clever guy. Without a doubt, you know, he's a winner. I'm, I'm not, not knocking the, the, the people behind it. But if you look at the software, EquinEdge, basically what it is, it provides you with lots of tools to find winners, but it doesn't provide you with the winners. You still have to make that. We're not interested in that shit. But no, just yeah. tell us the winners. Well, that's it. Unfortunately, you might not want to hear it, but 90% of punters literally just want to be told yeah, the winner. The it doesn't matter. Is this value? Is it not value? I don't I don't care about that shit. I want the winner. Yes. You know, <laughs> what's value? I want the Listen, fucking winner. Give me the winner. Yeah. Where up your ass, it's all about info. It's not, you know, forget exactly. it. It's just hanging around in the bushes down David Manusias. That's the way to get a few quid, honestly. Yeah. Stop <laughs> fanning stop fanning around and bet with it. Give me a fucking winner. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is the thing. So at Equinage, I think you can subscribe for like about fifty dollars a month, yeah, like say in America. I use Proform by the way over here, but but Equinage 
like I say, they will give you edges because they give you angles, but you, yeah. but the only thing is, <clears throat> you then pick the wrong angle. You pick, <laughs> you, pick yeah. you pick the one where it says this is the easy leader. <laughs> right, yeah, we'll bite that then. Oh, but then, but then the top rate is just one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't make the top rate. I went for the easy leader. <laughs> you know, the software said this will lead. Yeah. Well, that's it. Then. Chuck yeah. the computer out the window. Yeah, fuck fuck it computer. I've done my bollocks <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a suitable way to finish. We're all doing our bollocks as, yeah, as a. I'm not for that, man. I'm fucking <laughs> subscription to this shit. Yeah. Yeah, subscribe to Patreon and do more money. In. That's yeah. what we want to hear. So, like I say, look out for the show this week with the uh, with the gambling gambling chaps, and um, we'll be back on Friday as always, and also next Sunday with the sermon. Hope you've enjoyed that. We have. Bye for now.